What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hope City. My name is Justin, and I'm one of the pastors here. So glad that you're with us. Hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Not sure what you did on Thursday, but I ate some food, I watched some football, I slept, and just repeated that whole process. And so grateful that you're here today. If you're a guest, I want to say a special welcome to you. Honored that you would spend part of your Sunday with us. And one of the things we say around here all the time is that Hope City is a place where you can belong before you believe. And so no matter where you come from today spiritually, uh, we hope that you feel welcome and at home. You know, when we started Hope City four years ago, we knew that Indianapolis did not need another church. There's so many great churches in Indy. We knew that we weren't coming here just to start a church because just starting a church wasn't going to accomplish the vision that God gave us for this city, for this community, and for the world. What we wanted to be a part of was a movement of God that took ground for the kingdom of God. And that was very different than just starting a local church. We wanted to be a part of God's movement. The church has never been about a building. It's always been about movement. And that statement has never been more true than right now in 2020. Movements are always made up of God-ordained moments. If you think about God moving in your life, as you look back on those experiences, what you probably see are a series of God-ordained moments that allowed God's movement to become evident in your life, whether that be in your marriage or your career or relationships, even in your relationship with God. There's probably a series of God-ordained moments that led you to the place where you are right now, in your marriage, in relationships, or in your relationship with God. And the church is no different. August 30th, 2015 was a defining moment for Hope City Church. It was the first informational meeting for our church. It was in my living room. We cleared out all of the furniture in our living room and we set up a bunch of chairs and a group of people showed up. And some of you are watching right now who are in that living room setting over four years ago for our very first informational meeting. September 18th, 2016 was Hope City's grand opening at the Rich Charles. The Rich Charles is a banquet hall about two miles from where we uh, meet right now. And our kids' ministry was on a dance floor in a banquet hall. So that was how cutting edge our children's ministry were. And some of you were a part of the Rich Charles days. November 5th, 2017, we moved into our Main Street location. And God did some incredible things in this little strip mall that we remodeled, that we took over, that we made our own. We saw God bring so many people to Christ. We, got, we saw our numbers almost double in that location. January 5th, 2020. It was a defining God-ordained moment in the life of this church. That was our first Sunday in the auditorium that is right behind me. You know, we ran out of seats in both of our services that Sunday. And we didn't know what God was going to do. We didn't know if we were going to lose people because we moved. We didn't know if people were going to realize that we had moved locations. And people were sitting on the floor. Uh, People were packed into rows. It was definitely pre-social distancing. People were being blinded by the light coming through the windows before we purchase blinds and put them up to help control the light. But it was one of those God-ordained moments. And it was, it was this moment where part of our vision became reality, where we began to realize that God had something special in store for us in this location. And over the next few months, we began to prepare for all that God was going to do. And we had circled March 15th, 2020, to be a defining moment in our church. It was going to be the grand opening of this new facility that we had just moved into. But as many of you know the story that March 15th, 2020 was a defining moment, but not because it was our grand opening. It was actually what we call our grand closing. That was the day that we shut down in-person services at Hope City. And over the last nine months, we've changed. You've changed, I'm sure. I know that I've changed. Our church has changed. Our culture has changed. The fact that we are not meeting today, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, The fact that you're watching this service online is an indication just how much our world has changed. I started thinking about this year and all that we had in mind for what God was going to do, all the dreams and plans that seem to be sidetracked or derailed over the last few months. And I went back to the very first message I gave in this auditorium back on January 5th, 2020, And I shared a statement in that message that I want to share with you because I think if you put emphasis on a few different words, you're going to see how relevant that statement was then and how even more relevant it is now. 
I said on January 5th, 2020, what we are experiencing is not normal. The movement of God we are experiencing is not normal. And the opportunity we have is very special. What I want to say to you today, as we've lived now nine months into this pandemic, going into the Christmas season, what, are we, what we are experiencing is not normal. I think we've all come to terms with that. This is the new normal. But the opportunity we have as a church is very special. So as we wind down 2020, I just want to share my heart with you today. Hebrews in the New Testament is one of my favorite books of the Bible. In chapter 11 of Hebrews, the author lists ordinary people that had this extraordinary encounter with God. And because they had this extraordinary encounter with God, they began to live extraordinary lives. And the whole chapter is, if you look in different Bibles, it's the hall of faith or it's called by faith or people of great faith. And over and over again, you see this, these, this two-word phrase repeated. And the two words are by faith. By faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Isaac. By faith, Jacob. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses. By faith, Rahab. Over and over and over again, there are these people who are described as living by faith. In chapter 11 alone, the word faith is mentioned 27 times. If you study the Bible at all or, or been in church any amount of time, you know that repetition is given all throughout Scripture to create emphasis. And what made these men and women great wasn't their looks, it wasn't their social status, it wasn't their Instagram followers, it wasn't their verification on social media, it wasn't their business accomplishments or their financial portfolio. What made them great, the common denominator that every single person had in Hebrews chapter 11, was faith. After this list is given, of these great men and women of faith, the, the writer of Hebrews says this in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And I want to walk through these, through these three verses with you today. It says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. So as we come to the end of 2020, I want to answer this question with you. And the question very simply is this, where, where do we go from here? Where, where do we go in the midst of uncertainty? Where do we go in the midst of discouragement? Where do we go in the midst of disappointment? Where do we go in the midst of a pandemic? Where do we go... Uh, in the midst of a very um, host hostile political climate? Uh, where do we go uh, with economic uh, strain and hardship? Where, where do we go from here? Not just individually, but corporately. And I want us to go back and just kind of walk through these three verses and just make application along the way. Look at verse 1 again. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, to the life of faith. But what the writer is saying is that, that God has been active all around you. That as you go throughout your day, you are standing on the shoulders of men and women of faith who have gone before you. And not only that, that you have the Holy Spirit, you have the activity of God, you have the presence of God that has made his way into your life, that is actively working out all things for good in your life. And if we're going to go forward from here, the first thing that we have to do is we have to live with an awareness of all that God is doing. And I don't know about you, but it's easy at, for me at times to live with this awareness of all the things that are going wrong, of all the things that I'm upset about, of all the things that I'm, that I'm uh, fearful of, of all the things that make me anxious, of all the things that haven't turned out like I thought they should, of all the times that God hasn't shown up as I thought he would. But the writer of Hebrews is reminding us that there is an activity of God that is with you every day, that we are surrounded by these great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. And a daily awareness of that is a prerequisite to a life of faith. You know, back in March, um, 
we, my wife and I, Trish, we shot this video. It was kind of this jank video on Instagram. And we said to everybody who attended Hope City at the time, hey, join us on Instagram Live. Join us on Facebook Live. We're going to tell you what we're doing. And so we get on Instagram Live and Facebook Live, and we're like, we're going to have services on Sunday. We know the pandemic is, this, 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 this. you know, we, we know it's, it's raging. You know, we know that it's serious, but we're going to have services. It's going to be amazing. So make sure you come. We're going to have disinfectant. We're going to have, uh, you know, uh, all this stuff. We're going to socially distance. We're going to do all these things. The next day, the NBA canceled. We get back on Instagram Live, Facebook, like, hey, we're canceling on Sunday. That was on Wednesday. We had three days then to create the internet campus experience that you're experiencing right now. As many of you know the story, uh, we had a donor that stepped up in a very huge way and provided us with the equipment that we needed to get the campus going. Uh, We've added equipment along the way. But we were so ecstatic to have this defining moment in the life of Hope City Church of our first Sunday of an internet campus. And uh, this is the first week here. Uh, This is 12 minutes into the service. Look at that. 78 of you are online. That's amazing, all right? Like, that's, that's unbelievable. Everybody was excited about it. Even these guys were excited about it. They, were, they couldn't get enough of Hope City, all right? They were our two biggest fans watching live this morning. I love that. But that was a huge moment of God going before us, God providing. We literally ran in circles around this room that I'm in right now, high-fiving and cheering that we were actually able to pull off the internet campus. That was God going before us. That was God active and moving Uh, Not only that, the first two weeks of the pandemic, we asked you guys, would you give over and above your giving to help us provide PPE for first responders and for nurses? You guys stepped up and you gave over $6,000 over and above your regular giving back in March, the last two weeks of March. And we were able to take masks to uh, not only to police officers in Zionsville, but to several hospitals around our city. We were able to provide Uh, over a hundred nurses and doctors with Chick-fil-A, which is Christian chicken, which is the Lord's blessing, all right? That that is just a blessing. We got masks there, we got chicken. I don't know which is more valuable in in that right there, but we were able to do that because of your generosity within the first two weeks of the pandemic with people not even meeting here. Beyond that, we began to recognize that the internet campus experience that we were were providing, uh, it was not adequate for the ministry that we really wanted to do through the internet campus. And so we asked privately for a few people to step up and to be generous. And we went through a redesign within a seven-day period of time. We tore down the old stage and we began to remodel this stage. This is what our old stage looked like. And uh, we tore out all of the carpet. We had a great group of volunteers come in and uh, we bought a bunch of new lights. Uh, we laid brand new subflooring down. We had volunteers come in and spend literally hours upon hours painting the stage. And we were able to then uh, have this new design uh, that we were able to enhance our internet campus. It was God going before us. It was God providing. And, and the, the internet campus experience that you're experiencing right now is because of God's activity. It's, it's because of God's blessing. It's all that God is doing. Back in July, we said, hey, we're not back in the building yet, but we think school's going to start, and our urban partners, Urban Act Academy, need us to step up big time. They, they need to provide um, school supplies for their kids. Would you give over and above your regular giving again, and would you help us provide $4,500 worth of school supplies so that every single kid could have a backpack full of school supplies going into this, this year? And you know what you guys did? You stepped up. And every single student got a t-shirt, they got a backpack, they got school supplies because of your generosity. All throughout the pandemic, we were thinking about how different ways that we could connect with you. We were emailing, we were Zooming, we were doing Facebook Live, we were doing internet campus experiences on Sunday, but there was nothing like being in person. And so we planned an outdoor experience for our fourth birthday back in September. Over 300 of you showed up outside for a socially distanced birthday party and it was incredible we had such a a great time and we saw people being baptized at the end of rooted we saw people being baptized at our um at our um birthday party this is my daughter janaya who got baptized my niece got baptized at our birthday party it was just the evidence of god's movement in our church even though we weren't meeting together on a regular basis god was still going before us and then just this last week you guys We said, hey, Urban Act Academy, 
is in need of Thanksgiving dinner. And for the last two years, we have provided Thanksgiving baskets. And we know that it's in the middle of a pandemic. We know that you're not actively coming to this building. But would you step up? Would you provide 150 meals for every single family at Urban Act Academy? And you know what you guys did? In a matter of two weeks, you gave over $6,000 worth of food to every single family at Urban Act Academy. They had Thanksgiving dinner because of your generosity. It's so easy, isn't it, to live with an awareness of all that's wrong and all that hurts and all that disappoints. And I just wanted to remind you with just a few pictures and a few stories that they're, they're, God is doing something big. And we don't always see it and we can't always feel it when you're watching services in your living room or you're driving in your car and looking on your phone or, or when you're trying to corral a two-year-old and, and engage in worship online. I know it's not easy. But I wanted you to be aware of all that God is doing. Look how he continues in verse 12, verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. He says, Let us run with endurance the race, or let, let us uh, strip off everything, every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. So he says, Hey, there needs to be this awareness of this great cloud of witnesses that are all around you. And then you have to strip off everything that's holding you back, strip off anything that slows you down. And if you're going to grow in your faith in 2021, you need to determine to strip off things that slow you down. One one of the things that I realized in this pandemic is that our entire model of doing church is built on you being here in person. That's just the way it has been for 200 years. The American church is predicated on people showing up to a location. Typically, I'm just going to be straight with you, the reason that it was set up that way, the reason that that ministry model worked is a gathering of people, a large gathering of people, they would bring their tithes and offerings. They would bring their collective offering and that would fund the ministry of that local church. And so there was this importance made on that specific gathering. I can remember when we first started Hope City, we had to cancel, the first year we had to cancel three Sundays and online giving wasn't as prevalent four years ago. And we were a brand new church, and so not a lot of people were giving online. And those three Sundays that we missed gathering together were huge hits financially. And so the American church has been set up with this, this model of ministry, or this business model of gathering people in one location and then dispersing them out from there into small groups or Sunday school classes or whatever it might be. But that Sunday morning gathering was the linchpin of all ministry. And so when everything moved online for every church in the world, everyone was excited at first, right? We had 78 people in the first 12 minutes on first service. It was amazing. I was just on Facebook. But watching a service over the last nine months, you guys have realized, has been a lot different than experiencing worship together in person. And so one of the questions I've been asking myself as as a leader is, what is slowing us down as a church? What is slowing down our ability to fulfill the mission that God has called us to as a church? How how can we help more people find hope and follow Jesus even in the midst of a pandemic, even as though we're not gathering consistently or as we used to on Sunday mornings? For the last 200 years, the American church has said this, if you want to connect to us, you need to come to us. But obviously that model is not working in our current situation. And so for order for us to strip down everything that is holding us back, everything that is slowing us down, I want us as a church to start thinking this way. You don't have to come to us. We're going to come to you. And yes, we are coming to you on Sunday mornings through an internet campus experience, but that's just one facet of how we can meet you. Jesus met people where they were and how they were. Jesus met people how they were. He didn't ask them to change or conform to be in a relationship with him. After they entered into a relationship with him, he transformed them. But they didn't have to clean up or work their way into a relationship with him. He met them right where they were. And he met them how they were. And so one of the things that I want us to think about as a church and be about as a church is, how can we meet more people where they are? And how can we meet people as they are? What does that look like? One of the changes that we're going to make after this week, obviously, is that we're going to um, shorten the length of our services. Um, 
I'm going to try to, I'm going to do my best to shorten my messages. Honestly, I am. And um, we're going to shorten the, the length of our service to help it feel like it's more engaging. Uh, we're going to uh, think through different ways that we can engage with you in the context of that service. We're going to expand our connection groups to include more Bible studies, more four, six, and ten-week studies. Um, we're going to do our very best to engage you in a discipleship process that is not dependent on you being in a location. And here are a few ways that this is going to start playing out. First is with our Christmas Eve services. And I want you to please be praying for our Christmas Eve services. Be, be praying for us and for me as we make decisions about Christmas. As, as of right now, for now, uh, our plan is to have four in-person Christmas Eve services on December 20th and on December 24th at 3.30 and 5 p.m. That's our plan for right now. We are going to have in-person services. But keeping in mind that we want to come to you, keeping in mind we want to meet you where we are, we're, we're thinking about how can we create an engaging Christmas experience, a shortened Christmas experience that tells the story of Jesus in a compelling and life-transforming way. And so for the last two weeks, we've been writing scripts and shooting videos, and we've been singing songs and, and, and recording worship. We've been doing all of these things to put together this online experience that's going to play at the exact same time as our services, for those of you that aren't able to make it, for those of you that are out of state, and for those of you that really don't feel comfortable being in an in-person service. And I know that 70% of you are in that camp. And so rather than make you feel guilty or rather than rob you of the Christmas experience, we're trying to meet you where you are. And so I want you to be praying for our Christmas Eve services, praying about who you can invite, praying about creating a watch party online, praying about sending the link to somebody that you work with, praying about how you can engage in our Christmas Eve experience. Christmas is my favorite time of year. It's our biggest event. It's our most impactful event. It's our biggest attended event. But it is going to look different. But just because it looks different this year doesn't mean that God isn't going to move in it. But that is predicated on us engaging with it. So be praying about Christmas at Hope City. The next thing that we're going to do, starting after the first of the years, we're going to create what we're calling the Hope Changes Everything podcast. And this is going to be an opportunity for us throughout the week to engage with you, to give you uh, content, to extend conversations, um, to do question and answers, to allow the Sunday morning experience to live throughout the week that allows you to engage in Hope City, not just on a Sunday morning. That's our, ho that's our hope. We want to strip down the things that are holding us back. Why is that? Look what he says in verse 2. Let us run the race with endurance. Well, let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. God has a race for us to run. And we need to run the race that God has set before us. God has a race for us, Hope City. And we're going to run the race of providing a place for people to belong before they believe. We're going to run the race of helping people experience life transformation, not just behavior modification. We're going to run the race of building a multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-generational church that looks like heaven. You know why? Because that's the race that God has for us. We're going to run the race of doing life with one another, even when it's messy, even when it's hard, even in the midst of a pandemic. We're going to run the race of providing a place on Sundays where people can experience the love of God both in person and online. And can I just tell you, we're, we're not called to run Traders Point's race. We're not called to run Mercy Road's race. We're not called to run Northview or I-Town's race. And so let's run that race with intentionality. Let's, let's strip off everything that's holding us back. And how do we do that? He says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. If we're going to run the race that God has for us, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. I had big goals for 2020. I don't know about you. We don't set attendance goals at the church. We set engagement goals. So we set a goal of how many people we want volunteering, how many people we want in small groups. But our attendance was at an all-time high. We, we grew by 100 people in the month of January 2020. More people were in connection groups in January and February of 2020 than any time before in our history as a, as a church. More people were serving and engaged and finding purpose than ever before. Momentum was high. 
And as an, as an achiever, it's easy for me to focus on the achievement I want to accomplish for Jesus and lose focus on Jesus. In John chapter 12, there's this interaction that Jesus has with his disciples that's really fascinating. And I think it speaks to right where we are in our culture today. Jesus, the, Jesus' ministry is at an all-time high momentum-wise. He's just been anointed in Bethany as the Messiah. He's been recognized as a, by, the, by one of the prophets as the Messiah. He goes into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. People start laying palm branches down, worshiping him, singing songs to him, praising him. After the triumphal entry is what it's called uh, in the book of John, after that experience, Jesus starts talking about dying. He starts talking about laying down his life. He starts talking about sacrificing himself. And for the first time in two and a half years, the disciples start like understanding what he's saying. And they start going, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought you were going to overthrow Rome. I I thought you were the savior of the world. I thought you were the Messiah. And like everything that they had known and thought over the last couple years, just the rug just gets ripped out from under them. And John, about the middle of uh, John chapter 12, it just basically says they were discouraged and they were disillusioned and they were questioning God and they were questioning themselves. Like, why were we following this guy? And is he really the Messiah? Is he really the Savior of the world? And what if he's not? What have we done? And in John chapter 12, verse 32, Jesus says this in the middle of their doubt and in the middle of their discouragement and in the middle of their disillusionment. Jesus says, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And it's just this reminder that we are the vessel of the message of God, that we are the light of the world, but we are not, we're we're not God. And so our job is to lift Jesus up. Our call is to lift Jesus up and trust that he is going to draw all men unto himself. When I am lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's the most important thing that we can do. As we head into Christmas, man, let's lift Jesus up. As we head into 2021, let's lift Jesus up. As we look forward to um, a vaccine for the virus, let's lift Jesus up. As we interact with people in our workspaces, our people in our families, let's lift Jesus up. This passage closes, and he says this in verse 3. He says, Think of all the hostility that Jesus endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. You feeling weary these days? You thought about giving up? Maybe for some of you, you thought about giving up on a relationship. Maybe for some of you, you thought about giving up on your job. Maybe for some of you, you thought about giving up on your marriage. Maybe for some of you, you just thought about giving up altogether. And the writer of Hebrews says, hey, when you feel weary, when you feel tired, when you feel discouraged, when you are at the end of your rope, when you are just one step away from giving up, think about all Jesus went through for you. And don't give up. 2020 has been a year where it's been easy to see all that we've lost. But I want to remind us as we close of the ground that God wants to use us to take in 2021. Each year, um, at the end of the year, we display radical generosity. Radical generosity is one of our core values. And uh, we do this thing called the Give Hope Offering. And it's something that we've done literally since our very first year. 2016, we had a $40,000 goal for our Give Hope Offering. I think we raised like $26,000. And so the next year, 2017, we had a $40,000 goal for our Give Hope Offering. And we hit that goal. And then the next year, we raised it to $75,000. And we hit that goal. Last year, our Give Hope offering goal was $100,000. And not only did we hit that goal, but by God's grace and God's provision, you gave, people at Hope City gave, $113,000 over and above their regular giving in the month of December. And it really was the, a catapult. It was the catalyst for the ministry that we've been able to do this year. Without those resources, without those funds, without having the margin to do ministry, we would have been um, really hampered in the, the effectiveness that we've been able to have in 2020. I don't know that people would have found Christ. I don't know that people would have been baptized. I don't, I don't know that we would have been able to have the wins that we've had this year had people not been faithful last year. And so we began to pray about what our Give Hope offering looked like in light of COVID-19. We know that many of you have 
been hurt by COVID-19 financially. And so we began to pray about what that looks like and what would stretch us. And so this year, our goal for 2020 is not to raise from the amount last year, but to keep the $100,000 goal that we had last year, to keep that as a goal this year. Keep it in mind that for some of us, God has really blessed us this year. For some of us, um, this has been a hard year. And we trust that God is going to lead every single person to contribute what they can over and above their regular giving to help us accomplish some really incredible things this year. I want to break down what this Give Hope offering looks like. The, the first $15,000 of our Give Hope offering we're going to use uh, towards missions. $10,000 is going to go to Urban Act Academy to fund a special project for their school in a time of need. You can obviously imagine that IPS school, um, they don't have the resources and the funding uh, that some of the suburban schools have. And so we are a strategic financial partner for them. And so we're going to give them a $10,000 gift. Uh, we're going to take $5,000 of that and we're going to give to church multiplication. Uh, we're a part of an organization called Multiply Indiana. We've planted 16 churches over the last three years. And so we're going to use a portion of that to plant new churches. New churches reach new people. Um, we're going to use $30,000 of that to uh, overcome and, and pay back the budget deficit that we've had this year. Our budget... Um, has been about $34,000 a month, and our giving over the last three or four months has been about uh, $29,000. And so we are, we're running about a $30,000 budget deficit from giving over um, our budget, and so we're going to use $30,000 of that to make up that deficit. Um, we're going to set aside $25,000 for staff expansion. The way that we've done ministry, the way that we're doing ministry, has, has radically changed. And the staff the staffing that we need as a church to be an online church and an in-person church has caused us to change our staffing model. And so we want to use that $25,000 uh, to bring on additional staff in 2021. That's going to help us do that in a responsible way. And then finally, I'll be talking more about this on, on January the 3rd, but we're going to set aside $30,000 for a building fund. Uh, we're in this building until June of 2022. That's when our lease ends. And so we do have some time, but we want to be prepared. We want to be proactive in setting ourselves up for a permanent home. That could be this facility. We don't know what God's going to do. It could not be this facility. But our last two moves as a church have been to temporary facilities, and they have been reactions and not pro, and not be, we've not been proactive. And so we're going to create a building fund that will, that will not just live there, but it will actually be something that we can contribute to and to begin to grow and prepare for what I think God is going to do over the next year or two with us as a church. I'm going to talk a lot more about that on January the 3rd, but that's how our Give Hope offering is going to break down. And so I want to encourage you to be praying about how you can co contribute to that, how you can be involved. Uh, over and above your regular giving, you're going to help us take ground for the kingdom of God. You're going to help 2021 be a year uh, that we look back on and say, man, God went before us and there was such a great cloud of witnesses around us. We're going to trust big, and we're going to take risks, and we're going to serve others, and we're going to love recklessly, and we're going to give generously. And we're going to have a front row seat to seeing God do something special as we end this year, as we go into 2021. I cannot wait to see you guys next week as we kick off our Christmas series called An Unstoppable Christmas. I love you, thankful for you, and I'm excited to see what God's going to do. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that um, you can be trusted in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of um, discouragement, in the midst of not understanding. You can be trusted. Your character is true. We've seen you show up. We've seen you be active. We've seen you provide. And God, as we um, think about ending this year as a church, I pray, God, that you use the last month of our year to really just be a defining moment for us. That we turn the page of 2020 not out of exhaustion and not out of um, just a desire to get it over with, but God, that we turn the page on this year with an anticipation of all that you're going to do, with a gratitude and a thanksgiving of all that you've done, and a realization that you're just getting started. That we're just getting started in our mission of helping people find hope and follow Jesus. So God, no matter where we go from here, we pray that you lead us 
pray that you guide us. Not that we drag you along, but we see where you're working and we join you there, God. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.